And welcome everyone to a Scouts of Entertainment Reforged replay. We're back at Toll for Us. It's a nice 5v3. And before we get started, if you'd like to submit to other Reforged replays like this, or other Total War replays like Rome 2 or Warhammer 2, etc., the links are played on your screen and also in the description below. You will also have the option of sending me replays to my Discord at Scouts Reconnaissance. Link is also in the description below. And if you're a YouTuber, there's also an area for you to post your own videos if you want to promote yourself. I also have a PayPal option, subscribe to start, Patreon, or send me a link if you like to support my work. But if you like to support my work in other ways, then please remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, tick that bell for notifications, and leave your own thoughts about this battle in the comment section below. With that, let's jump in. So today's replay comes from Tommy Wiseau. He's one of three defenders, and he's commanding the realm of Mordor today. And we have some Uruk captains here, Temple Executioners armoured up. We got some Sauron's Will, two units of Walk Javelins. Some Adunian Shadow Bows, some Olakai, Mere Smuggle Chosen mixed in with some Sauron's Will here. We have some Moron Infantry here, two units. Some more Sauron's Will, more Mere Smuggle Chosen. We have some Moron Infantry over here. And looks like we have, with the exception of the Adunian Shadow Bows, no other arch units down here. We do have Javelins, of course. His, javelin, his Archers are up here. Two units of Moron Archers and Temple Guard. Now, Tommy is not hiding, unlike, um, most defenders, he's deployed his army right at the foot of three bridges. Sometimes, most defenders actually tend to deploy their forces back here and have a lot of arch units just waiting up here in ambush. But we'll see what Tommy does once the battle starts. Anyway, he's got some Melkor's chosen down here. His general is back there in that big blob. His ally is Morris, who I don't think I've seen before, so if you knew Morris, welcome to Reforged. He's commanded where I'm a Dolwinian. There's some Mokwindi Glade Masters here. We have a mixture of Evelyn Infantry, Evelyn Hammer Guard, McQuindy Pikes, two units it would seem. Possibly some McQuindy Bows. Uh, we've got some Evelyn Marksmen too mixed in there. McQuindy um, Glade Masters, as I said. Nandor Glade Guard, that's what I was thinking of. We also have a Catapult. Possibly some Seldon River Patrol. I'll keep an eye out for them, of course. Making our way up here, we have some Evelyn Vine Guard here just guarding the land bridge. And do we have any troops, so, sorry, back up here? Sometimes we have troops here. No, we don't, not this time. Okay. Coming to the final defender today, we have Lothorian, commanded by Joran, a well-known veteran of Reforged. And he's got some Lauren Axemen here, some Lauren Warriors, Lauren Spearmen. Uh, looks like we've got some Lauren Swordmasters. Definitely some Lauren Archers here. Uh, Karas Kahong Guardians, I bet. Uh, we'll keep, we've got some Wooden Protectors as well. Keep an eye out for Watchers of the Golden Wood and Kindred of Caliborn. They're usually fixtures in any Lothorian army we see these days. But um, yeah, his army is so densely packed there it's almost impossible to try and find them. It's been a while going over that. But, moving on, we have our first attacking army, Cardolan, commanded by new player 195, who I haven't seen in a while, so it's good to see him again. We have some Minherith Spearmen here, 3 units. We have some Minherith Men at Arms, 3 units. We have some Minherith Sharpshooters, 2 units there. Manitroman Gatekeepers, the elite crossbow unit of Cardolan. We have some Doom Knight Captains, Hearthcove Omen Sul, some Greenway Garrison Spearmen, and I think that's actually it there for Cardolan. Keep an eye for Rangers, of course. But um, yeah, that's all I see there at the moment. Our next attacker is. Orcs of the Misty Mountains, commanded by Son of the Dunedain, who has two units of Orc skirmishers out front, some Goblin Infantry, we have some Mount Nura Coast, we have one, two units of Heavy Goblin Archers, some Cave Troll Drummers, uh, I'll keep an eye for Snow Trolls, they do have that hidden ability these days. We have two units of Heavy Goblin Crossbows, Goblin King's Bodyguard, Drake Broodlings, and that's all I can see there for him at the moment. Alright, down here we have Dunlin, commanded by Mighty Murko, who has some Spears of Warthank, Walk Skirmishes, Riders of Warthank, Walk Skirmishes again, Half Orc Vanguard, two units there. We have a Catapult, we have some Dunlin Pikemen, two units, and Dunlin Hunters. The rest of the army, I bet, is invisible. Alright, we come to the Realm of Imladeris, commanded by Jev. He's got some Norentina Warriors here, two units. Archers of Rivendell, two units. Elder and the Archers. And we've got some Lateris Guardians. Not armed. Not armored, sorry. We have some Brunan River Wards. We have some Spears of Rivendell. 
Ahmed up. We have some Imadaris Sentries, Speeds of Rivendell, and Imadaris Guardians, not Ahmed up. We have some Brunei and River Wards, and more, sorry, Swords of Rivendell there, my bad. Some Gwaithai and Rotudo. Sword Masters, and Swords of Rivendell. Now, it's curious that Jev has deployed here. He might be thinking of setting up some units up here to try and shoot at any potential Catapult or Arch units the defenders might place over here. We have seen attackers deploy that tactic pretty consistently of late, so we'll see if it happens again today. In any case, we come to the final attacker today. Parad, commanded by Samurai, who I have seen before. He has some champions on Nafrat, some disbanded Serpent Guard here. We have some Trollman of Rad, two units. We have some Muhad Beast Hunters here, two units, and Demons of the Desert. Two units of Muhad Berserkers. Three units of Muhai Warriors, two units of Muhai Beast Tamers, Haradrium Spearmen, two units, some Haradrium Archers, and two units of Sathron Archers. And that is it. Let's get this replay started. Enjoy. Okay, so what we got here? So Morris is pulling his unit of Vineguard off the hill already. The Thorin is obviously on the march. We have a unit up here on the hill, I didn't notice before. Some Lauren and Swordmasters, I think Joran forgot about him. And then realized they were there and he's just racing them across. The Lord Skirmishers might get into them. Remember, we did see Sun deploy them way out front. He was thinking about setting them up. Maybe try and ambush Lothorian. We'll see. There's the Watchers of the Golden Wood right there. In any case, Lothorian's making his way across. We got Morris deploying himself to the foot of these three bridges, not really an area the attackers tend to come at the defenders. We see them send over some units here and there, but we don't really see a full-on a full -on attack is why I'm going with that on these bridges. It's usually always the land bridge and the rear entrance on the other side. Those are the main attack points for most players on Toll for Us, but you know, first time for everything. Alright guys, we are back and as predicted, or hoped I should say, we've got the attackers running up the hill here to try and ambush the defenders. We've got Mighty Merkos setting up some great low trackers, launching the warriors in, well, in tow. Archers are now following the end of Eldenly Archers down here. And I have never seen an attacking player do this before. We'll see whether they can reach them. It is the elves, so anything's possible I suppose. If anyone can make that shot, it's them. We have Morris deploying some Mulquini bows here. Not a good idea. Just be glad there's no uh, Watchers of the Golden Wood up here. <laughs> They'll make that shot for sure. But Gretho Trackers, they're firing. We're under attack. Okay, a few casualties there. Alright, Norton Tino. Sorry, Elden with Ice is far. Where are they shooting at? Oh! They've got some hits here on the Mears Model Chosen. And Sauron's Will. Oh, uh, Tommy got too comfortable there. And Jev pounced. Tommy has to fall back most of his forces. We've got some Nazgul here embedded in there. I don't know if the old enemy archers can make that shot. Not seeing any arrows come this way. And the more infantry spread out like that, probably not worth really shooting. Archers from Dale there, but you know, Tommy's pulled back, so we might see Jeff fall back here any second. Okay, the McQuindy Bows, that's the carnage wrought by the Gwethlo trackers. Obviously, a much better unit than I give him credit for. They're a light TR's unit, but even though they were firing on. Sorry, they got a number of kills on the Quindy Bows. Which was surprising, actually. I'm surprised on the Quindy Bows to come to them so quickly. They've still got 68 in their ranks, but you know, we see about 20 dead there, at least. It's not really that good there for them. In any case, we'll, be, we'll see if Morris can bounce back or not. Joran has made it across and has set up his defense. We've got some 
Melkor's chosen at the head of the pack for some reason. Not a good idea. Probably should get them across the land bridge if he's going to use them but later. But, um, or we'll fall them back, but just don't leave them there. We got some spearmen being moved up. Hey guys, we're back, and Harad has arrived. Samre. Targeting the Moron Infantry in loose formation. Tommy would like that. Get him to waste as much ammunition as possible on a relatively low to mid tier unit, you know, but definitely more on the low side, in my opinion. Moron Infantry is alright, just don't rely on it for victory. That's what these guys are for. But considering Tommy doesn't have any archer units close by, I'm surprised the Harad archers aren't moving forward just a little bit more to try and target the Sauron's Will and Minas Morgul Chosen. I mean, if Tommy's leaving them there, Harad should try to get some easy shots on them. I mean, you've got Nazgul here as well. It's strange that Tommy's leaving so many elite units exposed on the front lines. It is common practice for a lot of players to save their elites until mid to late game, more to late game. But, um, you know, on occasion I've seen players mix things up a bit to try and throw their um, opponents off balance by sending in some of their elites a little bit earlier than expected. To surprise, drive back and just catch their opponent out of position, but, um, yeah, I don't think this will apply here. We've got the Haradrim archers moving forward. It looks like Sunrad might be moving forward to try and take that shot. Pyrrhian Gas and Spearmen haven't really moved forward too much. Mighty Mirko bringing up the catapult. You know, Joran did leave his troops in a dangerous clumped up position right here. A lucky shot from the catapult could potentially get 20, 40, even 50 kills in a single volley. So, you know. Joran's really got to spread out his troops here. I think he's um, inviting Mirko to really shoot at him and get some good kills. So he's just going to pray Mirko doesn't score or hit. But um, yeah, Joran is pretty vulnerable here. I'm not liking this deployment. Hopefully he fixes it up a little bit before he pays for it. Yeah, we'll see what Mirko does in a minute. He's almost in position. Oh, Sun's army's almost here. It's a long column of troops, though. Still coming in. It's actually Jeb's men. Alright. Now. I think they are going for him. Let's have a look. Let's try and spot the four of these arrows. I don't know. I think they're trying to shoot the Nazgul. Could be their target. One Nazgul is a little bloody. Trolls might be able to intercept the Herodium archers. What have we got here? We've got some Dumb and Hunters, Hadrian Spearmen, and Little Hard Warriors. I think the Olag High alone could defeat this entire force here, but by the end of it, they will be severely weakened and damaged, and unable to really support the defenders against the more elite troops later on, so... It's a catch-22. Does he risk the Olag High? And can these other elites hold out without the Olag High? I see the Olag High as, as a real key to a Mordor victory, because they are they are Mordor's hammer. They're one of their strongest units. When your back's against the wall, you send in the Olag High. And it does give you a glimmer of hope to see them go into battle for the first time. As long as they're supported, they tend to fare well. In any combat, or in any engagement. But it looks like... We got some troops. Scam Walk Skirmish is being sent this way. That's interesting. 
But no, Tommy's game plan obviously is to trap the defenders here and shoot at them from the hill on this side. On occasion, we see crossbows deployed here, archers deployed here, and they let the attackers sorry, yeah, let the attackers come into the town and shoot them from the back up here. I'll post your thoughts in the comment section below. Which style of attack do you reckon is more effective? Deploying out here and trapping the attackers at the foot of these bridges and shooting them from the hill here, or allowing them to come in and shooting them in the back here, which is a more effective defense, do you think? Alright. Melkor's chosen, running through, breaking the Green Garrison Spearman. Duran has one unit of the Lorient Spearman here. We've got some in here of Spearman, mostly full strength. We got here. We've got some heavy golem crossbows getting ready. Okay, that catapult's getting in the way here of the Elven Archers a little bit. You can see a few of them shooting upwards, and it's because of that catapult, unfortunately. Melkor's chosen, being very effective in this fight. Practically owned the Greenway Garrison Spearmen on their own. They've got on crossbows. Were originally protected a little bit there by the Minhero Spearmen, but since they moved forward, they've been exposed in the Mokwindi bows, I believe. Yep. Oh no, March Wounds of the Wood, not bad. They've got the same style of ammunition. Fire on heavy gun crossbows though, not sustaining too many casualties. I've lost maybe about 15. Now of course chosen down to 18. Most of that charge is blunted by their own troops. I think he was hoping for a, a charge on the left flank of their enemy, but um, yeah, they only got a couple of troops there. Sharpshooter's exposed. Melkor's going in. Going for a rear charge now. Broken. Nicely done. Now these are just men at arms. Melkor's chosen shouldn't be scared by them. They should be able to just run up forward and then do a turn around and come back, but I don't know. The Minhero Spearman might blunt any charge. Yeah, you can see that charge was affected when they ran to those broken troops. Rough start here from you, player. We lost a few crossbows, a few sharpshooters. They're down to 54. This has got to be a cardinal sin. You never send men at arms style, men at arms troops, infantry in general, against um, cavalry with a good charge bonus like the North was chosen. They will obliterate. Okay, this unit's down to 53. I originally have a count of over 120. So Melkor's Chosen has killed more than 70 men, I think, at this stage, or almost 70 men. Okay, get one more charge in. Down to 19, yeah? Okay. Big pat on the back there for Tommy using the Melkor's Chosen right on the land bridge, the one place where I thought they wouldn't be that effective at all. And judging from all the dead bodies here, they've been very effective. Every kill they get is less energy that the rest of the army has to use to kill their kill these troops coming across. The longer that that means long sorry that means they will remain fresh for longer.
Both these guys are fresh. How's it going over here? Okay, attack has really stepped up here. The bandits throwing the jabbies. I like Hyde most of a lot. I think I've only lost one so far. Minus Walsh hasn't been hit hard here by the javelins from the walk skirmishes, I think. Maybe the bandits as well. Yeah, <laughs> this is a mistake from Mirko. He's, a, he's, he's trapped himself. He's trying to get him out of there. They're in enemy lines. And they're shaking. What about charges there? This second unit though has run straight into the no, God, Minus Morgul Chosen. I like Hyde trying to finish them off. Tommy Wiseau faring pretty well here on his right flank. Got some bandits stationed nearby, down to 43 though. We've lost a ton of troops since we last saw them. Same goes over here as well. More than 60 men. Might be something here. Probably going to fire into this exposed unit of near small we chosen. You have to think. Yep. But, um... Actually, I don't, I don't think they're in shield wall formation. And it's really hurting Tommy right there. Near small we chosen, this unit's down to 72. Got to, he's got to fold his model back further in. This should be probably the edge of his right flank. He shouldn't be extending himself so much. He's exposing himself, as you can see, and Harad's taking full advantage of that. Fortunately, it looks like Samurai's charged into him. So we might get a bunch of troops blocking them from the potentially more javelins, themes of the desert. I like highs in the back lines here, they've got to get into the center, they've got to try and destroy this attacking force. We've got bandits firing in on them. They don't seem to be too worried about friendly fire. They have lost half their men. Nazgul's here, down to eight, they've lost one already. It's 12 now, 22. So most trying to fire on the exposed troops of Mordor. Some trolls were actually was coming over. Dumb and hunters. Okay, so Summary's committed to this attack. Most of his army is, is still here. It looks like Mighty Merko has sort of given up. He's sending over his remaining forces to help the bulk of their alliance over here. Catapult not firing. Perth got of Amun Sul. Being sent up. Nipo bringing up his crossbows. That's a good. That's a good volley right there. Sharpshooters down to forty. Warden's really getting into them. Also, cycle charges from Melko's chosen aren't helping. Down to 18. We've got 
got that far on that. Okay, new players, second unit of been here sharpshooters. He's lost a lot of his sharpshooters. Very early on. Fourteen to twenty-seven. chosen still harassing the enemy I think their time is up though Wow <laughs> okay killed by a catapult getting a lot of friendly fire there and causing a bit of a chain route but they did kill the knock was chosen you got to give them that at least that's about it. That was that wasn't probably worth it. Oh, the Hearth Guard. Then they're targeting the March Wardens of the Wood. The patrol. Oh, good hit. Yeah, River Patrol targeting the Hearthguard on the suit. March Warden is targeting the Hemdall and Crossbows. This is one of Yupai's best units. Looks like the attack at the rear entrance to Tall Class has really died down. Some Ray could be giving up. No money yet. Some Ranger fire coming in. Doing nine Rangers. Okay, it's probably time to stop firing. It's not worth it. There's too few troops here to shoot at. The Warren Air Warriors are obviously trying to outflank. The Hearth Guard on the sword, down to 50. We've got 16 Lauren Axemen, 30 Lauren Spearmen, and 54 Evelyn Vineguard. We had 14 Lauren Warriors, but I think most of them have been taken care of by the Mentor and Gatekeepers. Seventeen and thirty percent here. The Pindy Pikes being shot at by the gatekeepers. Noon Rangers firing in, that's a big no no right there. Gatekeepers I get. The accuracy is pretty good. You see most of them getting hits despite this unit being in loose formation. Across those bridges down there. Go back, back over here, we can see some red making some moves. Okay, it looks like he's committing to a much larger assault this time. I don't like his odds. Tommy has the high ground. He seems to be fine with Summary shooting him. Will 
really trying to use his moral infantry as a shield. Judging by the position of them. Pikeman, down to 44. Probably run too far. Trying to overwhelm and crush the pikeman. The Lauren Arts is shooting upwards because of the Seldon River Patrol directly in front of them. The allies have got to communicate better. Defenders have fared pretty well so far 20 to 32. Setting up a depleted unit of Lauren Axman. Trying to move forward or what? I'm not sure. Okay, keep his moving up again. Being so close. Uh, I was going to say half the ammunition appears to be missing. No, is the moral infantry doing the job? That is the question. We got Nazgul just standing here. Some race should really bring up his demons of the desert. That should be the play. We also got some troll shacks, as Mirko's bringing up. That's definitely a good idea. Should have done that. We saw that before, but he's a little bit slow bringing them up. Definitely should have done that a little bit earlier. We got Shari Stalkers, also a good idea to bring these guys up. While Tommy is leaving his troops in tight formation, it makes perfect sense. But he's got to send them up, get them a lot closer than this. But yeah, Demons of the Desert should have been brought up here a while ago. But so far, it looks like Harad isn't thinking about it. Joran and Morris have been defending the land bridge with as few forces as possible. We well, have got firing in. I think the other marks were shooting this way before. Oh, they shifted their target. 
they're trying to take it to the Dimdown Rangers, which are down to two. Good shot there from the crossbows. Heavy ball the crossbows. Uh, Mediterranean gatekeepers. And Goblin Archers, I guess. Defenders still have a bit of firepower at their disposal. We've got Evelyn Marksman up here from Morris. He ran this unit all the way around. He's got some Lauren Archers standing by. Some Kindred of the Calibre and Watchers, okay. So Duran's saving his best for last. Okay, so we've got the Catapult here. Not doing too much as of yet. Dumb Hunters still firing away here. It looks like they are slowly wearing down the Sauron's will. They're down at 28. Maybe it's in Tommy's interest to send this unit up alone to try and take on the Dumbin Hunters or the Troll Show Axos. Probably the Axos. Boron Ice is reloading, so they might be trying to fire here. He's trying to get him to fire. Yeah, here they come. Another unit of Troll Show Axo is coming up on the other side. And that's when the Dunium Shadow Bows right there. And the High Red Dune Spearmen. And we'll have Berserkers. So, Tommy's choosing his target well there. Dunium Shadow Bows will be able to destroy those units very quickly since they're so bunched up. Mere Mobile Chosen should be sent in straight away. Okay, they're going after the Nazgul. Good target. And Tommy's running out of meat shields. Keep running. Oh, they're down on Nazgul. He has to go rent out another cloak. And meet us more, but that one's damaged. Okay, Mirko's troll shield's being destroyed very, very quickly. There's not too much Sunray and Mirko can actually do here. He probably should abandon this attack. I don't think he can really get through. Tommy hasn't too well covered, and we haven't even seen the Orc Javelins come into it just yet. We'll head back over here. It is 27 to 41. Okay, we've got the Chaos Colon Guardians up here. I'm not really seeing really any other unit that can go toe to toe with them. Mounted gatekeepers down 33, but they're being shot at by the Evelyn Marksman. Got some goblin infantry coming in, but obviously that won't do too much. Mirko's catapult could really make an impact here. I mean, the defenders have come down the slope a bit. I think Dunn has a real opportunity to get some good hits here. I'm not firing. So I'm, I'm surprised he's not firing his catapult on the Karas Kalan Guardians, or at the very, very least, this section of the Elvis forces right here. Kindred of Caliborn is firing. He's shooting it down there? Uh, it looks like maybe they're trying to hit them some of the forces here. The Spears, the Rivendell, and the Brunei and River Wards. And they're just missing. Yeah. It appears to be what's happening. You can see Lothorin looks very, very comfortable here. There's almost nothing that can get past the Karas Khan Guardians and the Matter of Sentries if you always attack them just from the front. If you're going to attack them head-on, you need Archer and Javelin support and, you know, crossbow support. Any missile support, really, in general, is needed to take on the Karaskal Guardians. 
you can't take him just head on alone with infantry and, and your own spears and pikes. You're just playing at their own game, and that fight would take forever. And by the end of it, the unit would be severely damaged or gone. That's why a lot of people like to rely on the Guardians and the Mato Sentries in particular. Because they're a perfect holding unit. Short of Black Guard of Baradur and Black Watch Legion, pretty much nothing else will really get through. It'll take a lot of units to push through them if we don't have, you know, Black Guard or Black Watch in play. Now, yeah, how many of the cattle firing now? You're all got very lucky there. Probably thinking, why, why couldn't I hit them? He plays on my sausage gatekeepers. Sun, I don't know if Sun has any crossbows left. I don't know why Sun has his trolls nearby. He doesn't have any forces up there battling away. He's got some goblin archers here. His skirmishes are there, more archers, crossbows. It's good that he has another crossbow unit. Mount Nero Coasts. My point is, he's just got his, his drummers in the way here. He's not doing he's not doing his allies any favours by leaving them right there in the middle of the Norentina Warriors. We have a Lauren Spearman coming in. Those red units are probably just broken troops. Watchers standing by. Marksman standing by. Kindred standing by. We've got Dumbin Parking coming in. Could be a, We could see these guys fire any second now. It makes sense for them to do that. There's no elite units coming up just yet, so I'm not sure it, the, it's justified in using the watchers right now. We've got Glade Guard coming up. And the Warden's coming in as well. Only half the enemy force remains. Now, Joran probably save his uh, protectors for the Wardens once they get closer. He's got to make sure that this, this defense probably has to move down just a little bit to ensure the Javelins have enough elevation to arc their Javelins into the enemy. He had a bonus of moving down, it was also making it harder for the attacking archers and crossbows to shoot at them. The other slight elevation doesn't really work well here for the defenders. If I was using Mirko's catapult, right now I'd probably be aiming for this unit of Lauren and Spearman. The chances of friendly fire are minimal, but you know, the odds of a hit are pretty good, especially if the shots go a little bit wide to the right or the left, you've got a chance of hitting some units. We've got that bad Warhammer's coming in now as well. So new player committing everything he's got. Probably would be a good time to use the watches there to fire on the Thabad Warhammer's. So you know, well done for new player for getting in his elites there. With minimal casualties. Now, new player is leading this charge. Got good support there from his sailors, but um, if they do get through, it will be because of his units. And he got through without the protectors really getting their teeth into him, which is really good. And also got some great fire there from crossbow units. Did some bring up his crossbows? Yeah, oh no, it's heavy on archers.
He's getting secondary hits on the protectors. He's not even aiming for it. But yeah, to reduce the risk of friendly fire in this case, he probably should aim, and that's exactly what he's doing, for the wooden protectors. And that way he'll get his low shots, he'll hit, and then he'll blade guard here, the Evelyn Marksman, not an Axman. Even the Evelyn Hammer guard here now. You want to try and, if you're using archers, you want to try and aim for the furthest unit you've got. Uh, I think that was a, oh no, that was a poor shot there, that got pretty much all friendly units. Penny Bowes down to 58. 43 to 62. A little bit of a fight back here for the attackers. It looks like Karad's committing more men. And he got his units across. Now, we've got 63 champions, most of them still alive. This mount seven guard again. Snagger skirmishes. Okay, we had Snagger skirmishes 107. I thought I saw a smaller unit. Yeah, 111 there. Most of the trollmen are alive. Demons, 50, not bad. Riders here, 33, so only lost a couple. Most of the spears here are alive. But uh, Tommy might have run out of ammunition. Otherwise, he would be firing into them right here, right now. Well, we have a bit of a fight here. And Tommy's falling back behind the buildings using this cover. You won't get too much cover here. You won't. Try and keep them behind buildings here and here, but players can shoot through this gap. I've done it myself a few times. So Samurai and Mirko have got a time their attack pretty well here. But what he, because he's got because he's got the Riders of War thing, he probably should just run them a little bit here and do some skirmishes. Like um may try and put the riders as far as he can here to try to shoot in to the orc javelins there. I think he could do that, and I think he would be out of the range of the Orc Javelins if he tried that. He's got to try and wear down his enemy without getting hit himself, and that's not going to be too easy. But, you know, there's no there's no um, Orcs here, so he could actually try and run these guys through. He will get hit, he might suffer 10 losses, maybe. But once he gets through here, he can probably shoot them in the back and come around here at the same time, and then mess up Tommy's defense here a little bit, causing the panic, panic attacking from two different angles. Lauren Archers here, targeting Samurai's best troops. Surprised we had a capital here targeting the Wayflow Trackers. There's no other unit here worth shooting. Well, there's no other unit here to shoot. Probably shouldn't be wasting ammunition on these guys. But, you know, not bad. That catapult shot did take out about 10 men. Spears of War thing, line up the Lorient Archers. These guys here will fare pretty well. I'm surprised Jorian isn't shooting him. Okay, we've got all cabins moving up. But they'll definitely cop it here from a volley. Down five there. The Spears of Warthank shouldn't have retreated. They should have sent up the dismount sub guard to push back the old javelins while the Spears of Warthank fired into the Lorian archers. And he just gave Joran some extra time there to get some more shots into the, his own troops and Sunray's troops. Okay, Joran's pulling back, I think. Was he pulling back? Watch it! Who's shooting at him? So South Run Archers, I okay. go. Alright. Yeah, let's head back over here. Oh, those troops are broken. Thought there might be reinforcements. Okay. The Evelyn Hammer Guard down to 16, so they've lost a lot, but then again, they've dealt a serious blow to the music players' forces. The Wardens are down to 15. 
better at Wellington's down to 13. Other than we saw Masters, uh, half strength being sent in. We've got another sentries from Jev up here too, but they're only down to 12. I think maybe they've had them up here for a little while. Most of the Guardians are either dead or gone away somewhere. I'm not sure if they retreated them. Morris has plenty of reinforcements just running around down there. Balance of power looking pretty even here, but despite the fact that it's 49 69, they're up at 20%. to go yet in this fight. We've got some additional support. I don't think they're getting through here. Defenders just keep setting up reinforcements. There's some great though Rotodor coming in for some reason, they shouldn't be. Snugger skirmishes coming down the hill. These guys should have been sent up long ago. Oh no, you got the great thing about through. Amazing. They're getting a little bit stuck. Get their lances out. Not the best charge. I thought that was enough of a run up for them, but obviously not. Okay, watch is targeting them. So it shouldn't last long with the watches peppering them. Down to 18. Again, failed to get that lances out. That's not Jeb's fault, sometimes it just doesn't happen. Fifty-three to twenty-three. Both sides running out of men, but no change. Okay, he better do something soon. Duran's trying to surround him. Oh, that was a much better charge. They took they sliced all the way through to the very end. They're down to 42. Did they break? No, they're, they're charging through. Okay, what have we got here? We can do the Celebron. Okay, another bad charge there. Evelyn Infantry would have been a good target, but I don't know if they had a big enough run up. Yeah, Marksman is a good idea. They're in tight formation. That was an average charge for the Rochador right there. We saw them do much better before against the Lauren Warriors. Yeah, Drake Brewings down to 35, so they haven't lost too many. Okay, 
Yeah, they're at 82, so... Uh, it looks like it only took about 10. I'd say 10. Now yeah, we've got more Quindy Pikes moving up. So Morris is trying to shut this down. But I'm surprised he didn't get the marksman firing. Once the Rotula ran away. We've got Ella Infantry here, we've got some Vineguard here. I'm surprised he didn't move the Vineguard to try and protect his infantry. I mean, he's leaving them here as a guard on this bridge, but as you can see, there's no forces coming across this bridge at the moment, so what I'm saying, there's no immediate danger, so he should have just tried to use the Vineguard as a deterrent in the meantime, until such time as the uh, attackers came across that bridge, and then they were needed there. But right now, they're not needed there, they needed to protect these men. Morris will do his best here, but there's just too much room for Jeff to move around. He's almost wiped out his entire unit. 63 to 75. I finally got under that 20 mark. Okay, we've got all javelins here. Okay, Rise of War Thing. Not only firing, they're charging into the old Javelins as well. We've got Saffron Archers firing them too. Down to 67, so they're killing them. 66, wow, 67 to 76 was. We had a 20% gap before, it's down to 9. So that changed very fast. Has anything happened over here? Goblin King's bodyguard from Sun has been moved up. The fence here has pretty much collapsed. We've got walk skirmishes then coming across. Snow trolls are here as well. So I get there was an accident, but Morris really got um, surprised here, I think. He didn't count on the Great Rotula being as effective as they were. I guess he thought maybe his troops here could shut him down, but he didn't really use his archers at all. And they're down to 27 now. He lost a lot of them there. It's possible his attention was elsewhere. He was up here trying to deal with the attack, and he just... Didn't think too much of it. I've been there. It happens. I think this one time I played on uh, Rivendell, and my players, my teammates were saying, "Scouts, what are you doing? Your, your troops are under attack back there, or something." Like that. What are you guys talking about? I was totally focused on the fight in front of me, and I came back and my kindred of Kelbor were under assault. I lost like half of them. One of the defenders had deployed the cavalry unit outside of Rivendell, up in the mountains. So they took me by surprise. I just wasn't paying attention. Keep through the Kelleborn. Are these guys out of ammunition? Yes, they are. Probably should be deployed in front of the watchers just to protect them. They're out of ignition. The general is in this unit, but you know, I like factions like the Orcs in Misty Mountains. The loss of a general or an elven general doesn't have too much of an impact on the army itself. New player's got four thieves coming across. He doesn't have too many men left. 75 to 78, so we went from a 20% to a 3% variance. And once again, the defenders are choosing a new last stand defending point. But there's a flag up here, so what have we got? Oh, Morris set his catapult crew up here. I don't know. Might send the trolls up to deal with them. They're easy kills, so you know.
The Snow Trolls are a good unit, but you gotta you gotta support them. And they've got a great charge here, and you don't want to lose your trolls. You want to try and keep them alive as long as possible. They even do some cycle charges. Okay, he keepers here. Well, the Kindred might have killed them all off. Well, that's unfortunate. Crossbow's out of ammunition. Stone Troll's down to two. Bat Mountain Berserkers. I love these guys. Unlike most Orc units, these guys will pretty much fight for the last man. You can always rely on them. Tough, strong, and great morale. And more to the point, they overpower the Watchers and the Kindred here. In the infantry fight, you always want to be holding the biggest stick. Down to six. We have an Elven Warrior being planted in the ground here. It's the weirdest glitch ever. That was a thief, actually. Look, they're planting thieves. Maybe they'll spring up into another soldier. Okay. I don't know why Joran Jurang all the way down here. His way to safety is that way. But he would have run through the town in this direction. He's going to try and help out down here. We've got riders here. Okay, Tommy's got a few forces back here. The Morris has his pikes here as well. Okay. Demons of the Desert. I think these guys have a shot. I mean, they can, at the very least, take out a few of them with mini pikes. Somewhere as demons could be in trouble, you've got orc javelins firing. He's trying to line up the temple executions. Here we go. Nicely done. These are really tough units, so you have to take a few volleys. But by the end of it, there won't be too much left standing. Especially if the demons have full ammunition. And as you can see, most of them got up before. Then 30% or less got up the second time. A little bit of friendly fire there on the Trollman. Tommy has five Nazgul here still left. The, the demons can't fire on the Nazgul. If they do, they'll take out pretty much all the trollmen here. Okay, both her Shari and the demons intercepted by the Sauron's will. A little surprising some reason pulling out his Ashari, especially when they have ammunition left. Hang on. The watchers still have ammunition. That's just weird. Stop firing and pull out their blades, we saw it. Ninety one to eighty four. So this battle took a turn for the worse for the defenders. The 
and Nazgul will be shooting the Danes. Temple Guard, obviously out of ammunition, but being fired into the back here by the Snuggers Skirmishers. There's some wooden protectors here trying to take out the Spears of War Thing and the Snuggers Skirmishers. They're wavering. Alright, looking at this fight, I think Tommy and Jeron have turned it around and will be able to achieve victory. And the three champions left alive, make that two now. So what will the defenders do here now? Will somebody just admit defeat? It's possible if he lost all these demons. I think somebody did. The Rise of Orthanc here. Taking front out. Somebody did not admit defeat. He's right there. His demons are still alive. Will the demons claim another general? been in Defender's best interest to save his watches instead of trying to run at the demons. Sure, this general can't get up too much longer. I mean, he's been knocked down. He's really bloodied up. I don't know if these demons have any. Anyway. Okay, there goes Jeb's general. Got the Rochador back here. Oh, that's where they are. They're over here. There he goes. What is Tommy thinking about doing? So Jordan has some Syrian Emoth Rangers. He's obviously been firing them. He took out pretty much a whole unit. Is that Snarger Skimmages? No, it was either Heavy Goblin Archers or Heavy Goblin Crossbows, one of the two. Looks like Archers, they're all holding their bows. Oh, half the unit's still alive. 95 to 87. Okay, the attackers have the rest of the forces up here. Okay, Snug is pouring their jabbies in. Okay, 
the elevation not working in the defender's favour once again. Defenders really need to take that more into account. We'll see it happen a lot. The elevation working against them. So we've got a unit of Mountain Rick Host. Maybe going to hunt down the rest of the mortal troops in the city. And that could be Sun's General. King's bodyguard was here, but we know the general was in that unit. I think Azon is dead now. Ninety-seven to eighty-eight. I think it'd be close to being over at this point, but we still have a little ways to go. So maybe there's another twist to this battle. All right, Azon is not dead. He's alive. It might have been Morris's general that died. Exactly. Possibly Joran. You know, Tommy's still in play. Kill all the Rangers. His favorite killing move. Sweep under the legs, just hack away. That was a good one. He's on his last legs, unfortunately. I think all the time six feet up. I think there's only two fights left. It's the one up here and the one down there. And that's it. Taking the hill. There is no other troops remaining up here. I think Morris just admitted defeat. No, obviously it's Tommy's Nazgul. Oh, no, both are trackers. They almost killed an entire unit of Mount Urukos themselves. Where is the Nazgul racing up to? Down to four. Okay, there goes the general. Son really should have got his army down here. Incoming. Okay, looks like he made a defeat there. Okay, so Tommy got 3,281, Joran 2,412, Morris 1,329. Samurai, 1042, Jeb, 1133, Mighty Morocco, 1094, Son of the Dunedain, 779, New Play, 195, 590. Kill Counts, Dunedain Shadow Bows, 435, Temple Guard, 237, Nazgul, he had two units of Nazgul, I did not know that. One obviously got hammered, 
I got 85 kills there. The other one got 506. The other one got 109. Me and Smoggle Chosen, 52 to 117. Moron Archers, 207 and 211. Sauron's Will, 3 units of them. Uh, range from 46 to 121. Melkor's Chosen, 566. Melkor's Chosen did very well. Moron Infantry, 123, and they, they range from 25 to 123. I think that's it. So, I'm lucky there for the defenders. Well done for the attackers for sticking it in. Well done to the attackers for hanging in there and sticking it out to the very end. It really turned the direction I didn't think it could, it could go. So, well done to Samurai Jeff, Mirko, Son of the Doom Dome, and you player on their victory. Thank you to Tommy for sending in the replay. To Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Catch you guys in the next one.